All right, let's try some of these math skills that we were talking about in the introduction section. We're just going to start with a couple of formulas and see how we do with them. Um, I've got the formula for density, and it's written in Word. Let me go ahead and give it to you in math lingo. D equals M divided by V, and that's not going to be seen very well. So I'll go ahead and write it here. D equals M divided by V. Go ahead and pause the video, write the example, then we'll work this one together. All right, now we're going to take this problem, and my suggestion is if you need to, real quick, you may want to pause again and go get a uh, calculator because they let you use a calculator on the tax test. It's usually pretty simple math, but you probably don't want to do it longhand. So let's go ahead and see how we do. Rock has a mass. 28 grams and a volume of 17.6 milliliters. What is its density? The very first thing you want to do when you work any of the problems is look for magic words that tell you which formula. Just a reminder, they're going to give you this chart. And throughout these lessons, I'm going to use every single one of these to teach you how to work these problems. And so you'll notice that density is the first one that I'm doing. And so, since it says the word density, I looked it up on the chart, and it says D equals M divided by V. A rock has a mass of 28 grams. Well, I'm going to write it right where it goes. This is what I found with most students is where they struggle. Here's what I want you to do every time. Write the formula just like I did, D equals M divided by V, and put the numbers where they go, 28 grams. And a volume of 17.6 milliliters. Now before I ever start, I can see that my answer is going to be grams with a line and milliliters. Those are just units. They're not having, they don't have anything to do with what I'm going to do on my calculator. So I'm going to take my handy dandy calculator and I'm going to figure out the problem. 28 divided by 17.6. And that's the answer I've got. 15.91. Now you may think, okay, where am I supposed to round? Well, luckily on the test, you're just looking for an answer that's close to that. 15.91, if they just have 15.9, that's the answer I would pick. Putting the numbers in and figuring it out. Let's try another one real quick. And I'm going to use a similar question. I'm just going to use a rock just to make it simple. A rock has a density of... 2.67 grams per milliliter if its volume is 42 milliliters. That's its mass. Give you a second to pause, get this information, and we'll work this one. All right, here's what we're going to do. First, we start with the formula D equals M divided by V. All right, let's put the numbers that we see in the problem and see where they fit. A rock has a density of 2.67 grams over milliliters. So that goes there. Wow, that's interesting. It looks like the answer so far. What is its, if its volume is 42 milliliters, what's its mass? Now in math class, sometimes um, you'll put an X there or a question mark. It really doesn't matter. Either one works. But we're going to try to figure out exactly what answer there. You can see it better. I'm sorry. I drew it a little too low. So I put the numbers 2.67 and 42 milliliters. Hmm. How am I going to solve this? Well, in math class, you should have learned that whenever you put something over 1, it doesn't change. So 2.67 divided by 1 is still the same. And in math class, I've heard students say this a lot, when you have fraction equals fraction, you solve it by cross multiplying. So 1 times question mark is my question mark. And that means I'm going to multiply these other two numbers. So it is 2.67 times 42. And my answer, you'll see here, 112.14. 112.14. And in this, since it's grams divided by milliliters, and I see another milliliters, this one must be in grams. So I have two grams and two milliliters. They match each other. That would be the answer I would look for the bubble. That's how you work a problem 
and you rearrange a formula. So in this case, I cross multiply because it was fraction equals fraction. That's an easy one, and that's what we got. Uh, in the next session, we're going to do one more formula here. In the next session, you'll get to try one of these, but let's try a different formula altogether. Uh, one of the other equations on the uh, tax test is not density anymore. It is this formula, Q equals M C delta T. Now, it's written just a little bit different than what you see, but I like it written like this because it looks like Q equals M cat. And it deals with, in words, dealing with specific heat. Now, you may think, I don't know what specific heat is. The really cool part about the tax test is sometimes you don't even have to know what it is. You take the numbers they give you, and you solve it. Let's see if we can do one like this. How about this question? How much heat is gained when two grams of water has its temperature raised by two degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to give you a second to pause the video, write this down, then we're going to work the problem. All right, the very first thing we want to do is we want to write the formula Q equals MCAT, which is what it looks like. We've got to talk about a couple things real quick. Q, specific heat, equals mass times the specific heat constant times the change in temperature. That little triangle right there, it's really not an A, it's a triangle. Change in temperature. How much did it change? Well, we're going to see that here in a second. Now I'm going to teach you a really good shortcut. On the bottom of the formula sheet, they always give you numbers here that you can use on some of the formulas. Okay? And sometimes you want to use these numbers to help you. One of the things it tells you is that the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules grams times degrees Celsius. Now when you look at that, and when I look at that, the first thing I think is, wow, that looks complicated. Well, here's the deal. Forget the little unit right there. Forget the unit right here at the end. 4.18 is the main thing. It's going to go in the place of C. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the number right where they say it goes. 4.18 is going to go right there for C. Let's see what else they told us. How much heat is gained when 2 grams, there's my mass, 2 grams, grams is a unit of mass, of water when its temperature is raised by 2 degrees Celsius. Well, they told us the specific heat of water, that's why we put that there, raised by 2 degrees Celsius. Change in temperature was 2 degrees Celsius. Well, we have all of our numbers. There's my question mark. All I have to do is number times number times number. So let's multiply it out and see what we get. 2 times 4.18 times 2. My answer? 16.72. Now, in this case, you may think, well, I don't know what the units on the answer are. You don't have to. This is the answer you're going to look for. In this case, it's actually going to be in joules. But they're not going to test you on this part. They want to see if you can get the right answer. So a lot of times on these sections, all they want you to do is they're going to give you all the numbers you need in the formula. The biggest part of it is reading it, finding the correct formula on the chart, and then writing the formula and putting the numbers right where they go. In the next section, you'll get an opportunity to try a couple of these in density and heat and see if you can get the answers by yourself. Good luck.